Right. Hello, welcome to the Lightning Talks for today. Your first talk is on uh, regaining the sovereignty of your router from uh, Lucas de Sota. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for being here today on Sunday morning. I really appreciate that you took your time and your efforts to be here after a long day yesterday. But yeah, so uh, today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic that it's not just a legal, boring topic for lawyers, but it concerns all of us. Yeah, so I'm Lucas Lasota. I work for FSFE. I am a deputy legal coordinator, and I'm directly involved with this campaign. Well, uh, in order to talk a little bit what is router freedom, I divided my uh, presentation in three parts. So first of all, we're going to see how it affects each one of us, or why it's important. And then we will see also uh, some basic legal aspects in order to, to understand what is going on in Europe concerning router freedom. And then the third part, and the most important one, how each one of you can take part on, uh, on, on this activity and have your own free router at home because we think that it's very important for us to enforce our rights and to have um, control and sovereignty over our own equipment. So, uh, what is basically router freedom? Well. Uh, router freedom is the right that every customer has uh, to use their own equipment at home or at work. So, uh, ISP, Internet Service Providers, they uh, usually they force their own routers to their customers and they don't allow uh, we customers to use our own router. So, router freedom is the right that each one of us has to use our own equipment when we are connecting to the internet. If you want to use a router that has installed free software inside of it, we can. So, and there's a lot of arguments. Uh, I listed the uh, four of the most important one, uh, but there, uh, and we're gonna see that in fact, uh, these four arguments is already enough to see how that is important for each one of us. The first one is, well, freedom of choice. We are, uh, we have this right to use uh, the equipment that we want. Uh, this is uh, a right that has been confirmed and has been protected by European uh, right, uh, law. I'm sorry. So, the second argument is that when we have a rotor, uh, a free rotor, or I, I mean a rotor that we have free software in it, a rotor that we can choose to use, it's um, privacy friendly. So we use that in order to protect our own data. Uh, well, from this qualified audience, we all know that uh, all our data, our communication, our encryption, our backups, everything that is connected to the internet go through our router. And uh, if uh, we have some problems with that, of course, our uh, digital sovereignty is under uh, in danger. Well, the third argument, uh, free competition and compatibility right there. Well, um, ISP has created an entire market around uh, the lack of rotor freedom. So if you want to, to connect the internet, they can provide you a very simple rotor without Wi-Fi. Ah, do you want Wi-Fi? Then you have to pay more for that. Oh, you want to use more computers to access the internet, you have to pay more for that. So uh, this is very bad for the user. And besides, when we have just a few uh, pro, uh, rotors manufacturers in the market, uh, we start to have a monopoly and they have control our technology. And FSFE uh, is, is com completely different about that. We as users, we must control our technology, not other people imposing their control over our own equipment. And of course, the security argument. Uh, the security argument maybe for a few of us is the most important one because if there is some problems uh, with the ISP uh, rotor or if they are slow in providing uh, updates, uh, critical updates, we 
uh, having our own equipment, we can install by ourselves a, 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 a program of software that uh, is more secure, that is based on community aspect and not just uh, what ISP uh, thinks. So basically these are the arguments that uh, we are trying to push on and try to educate people and to say, yes, let's do, let's use our own router because this is very important. Yeah. So. Let's talk a little bit about the legal issues. I promise you that it's not going to be boring. It's very, uh, 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 it's very straightforward to understand. So since 2015, there is this net, net neutrality directive. And in the Article 3, it says that every citizen, every citizen, every European citizen has the right to use and to choose their own equipment. They call it term uh, uh, of their choice. And then in 2018, uh, there is a very important piece of legislation saying, uh, called European Electronic Communications Code, saying that all the definitions that uh, public authorities and, uh, uh, and private actors, all the definitions that applies to uh, equipment and to applies to rotors must be, uh, in must be adjusted to ensure net neutrality. Well, but uh, there is a small problem. And let's see what is this small legal problem. Some ISPs are telling that, okay, uh, users have the right to choose their own rotor, but in fact, rotor is part of the public network. So if a rotor is not, a, a pro, uh, it's not property from users, they are ISP uh, uh, property. And we think that is very bad. Um, this discussion uh, has reached the European level and uh, has reached the BEREC a little bit. BEREC is the Board of European Regulators of Economic uh, Communications. And uh, they say, yeah, well, uh, Rotor is part of the public uh, network and then uh, users have no right to choose it because it's our property, right? Uh, but we uh, at FSFE, we have this, been fighting this war for years. And in Germany, we uh, managed in 2016 to pass the Rotor Law that says that, in fact, the network termination point, that where the network, the public network ends, it ends in the wall, so in the plug where you can plug, plug your modem or your router. And everything that's inside your home, it's your property and you have the right to choose your own equipment. Yes, however, this is not like this in all Europe. So uh, we have conducted uh, a research in the FSFE and we have uh, seen that uh, it's not like this. There in other countries, People, although these rules are already uh, present in European legislation, in, in, in those uh, countries who have already implemented these European, uh, European rules into national uh, uh, legislation, there are uh, is still a lack of awareness. So as we can see here, a lot of countries, uh, users cannot use their own rotors. So uh, ISP, by contract regulations, they impose their own uh, rotors to users and they cannot choose their own equipment. Well, and how uh, here where uh, things start to get interesting because we can do something about it and you can do something about it. So we divide it in two things. If you wanted to uh, organize an activity in your own country, uh, uh, here in Belgium, uh, well, in a every European country, if you wanted to start um, a a an activity, a campaign for rotor freedom, we have prepared a wiki with a lot of information beginning from zero, how to speak with ISP, how to speak with the, uh, national authorities uh, uh, and public authorities, uh, and how to organize yourself, uh, which arguments you can use, which counter arguments you can use. So everything is, um, is, is written on the, uh, our wiki. And our work in the FSFE, it's all about community. So uh, we 
don't, uh, we, we cannot and we don't do anything by ourselves. It's our commitment. It's everybody working together and raising our voice and showing uh, to, uh, to public authorities, showing to ISP that we uh, have the right to use our own equipment. So we have prepared it. Please use it. Go there check it, uh, try to communicate uh, with your uh, public, uh, with your political representatives in order to spread this word and in order to have your own rotor in your, uh, in your own house. So, since we are in the university here today, I have prepared a small homework for, for, for you. So, tomorrow, Monday or this week, uh, we will try to check router freedom by ourselves. This is very easy. This is experiment. Uh, I think it's very good for you and for us in order to have a more precise panorama uh, about router freedom in Europe. So, what is the homework? What is the task? First, contact your or a random ISP in your region. So, I think everybody uh, has a connection to the internet. You have uh, an ISP in your home, in your, uh, in your city, in your region. Call them, send a short email, or if you are not um, pleasant with your ISP, you're, you, are, you are planning to change your ISP, okay, just contact uh, your future ISP, send them an email, and say, number two, I want to use my own router. I have bought my router in eBay, I have bought my own router on, uh, on internet, I want to use it. I am allowed to do that? And maybe they will say, yes, you are, maybe you are not. And then you ask for the login data, login data to public network. This is very important because uh, in order to have your own router uh, working at home, you need uh, your own login data, uh, login data to public network. So, Send them a message and say, I want to use my own router. Please provide uh, yeah, the public network uh, uh, login data. And then let's see what's happened. <laughs> and then if they say, yeah, fine, cool. If they say, no, you are not allowed to do that, please share your experience at uh, community.fsfe.org. And we are most um, uh, pleased to help you to get your own rota or to, uh, uh, to tell them that in fact you have the right to use your own rota. So if you uh, want to, to try that, will be, it will be excellent for to, to see what is the route of freedom panorama in your region. Well, uh, yeah, I, I think that's all that I, I really want to talk to you today. I really uh, appreciate your, for you to come in today. And if you have questions, please, let's discuss it. Yeah, so in fact, um, the BEREC, the, the Board of European uh, uh, Regulators, they are analyzing the technical aspects and they have provided the guidelines in order to, how to do that in order to not harm the public network. However, we do think that with some regulations we can do that, but not restricting the right to users to use their own equipment. It's perfectly uh, uh, um, it's perfectly fine to use our own equipment in order also to not to harm the public network. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, th that's a good question because then involves another type of uh, uh, of yeah, legal considerations. Yeah, uh, here we, we would like to uh, to at least at least at least enforce the equipment to have access to internet. Yeah, because TV it's a little bit different. But uh, when we are wanted to have access to the internet, usually they do this combo thing and they put everything in in the same box. But I would like yeah, okay. So for TV it's fine, but I would like to have my own private connection to the internet, and then uh, things started to get a little bit messy. So uh, this uh, uh, example here is, would be to have the road to, for, for the internet. Yeah. I, uh, I think we're out of time. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much again.